You are watching Christ's Commission Fellowship. Changing lives for eternity. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Good morning. I'm Aggie Sartu, very blessed wife to a wonderful man, Pastor Ricky Sartu. Thank you. In May 2003, I had to go through a modified radical mastectomy. I had a 10.5 cm mega-sized malignant tumor. The cancer also had spread to my bones. I was diagnosed with stage 4 breast cancer. This tragic diagnosis required a very aggressive medical intervention, including 18 weekly chemo sessions and roughly 30 days of radiation. I did not understand why I had cancer since I lived a happy and clean life. I wished God had given me a lighter sentence, but His greater plan was for me to experience Him even in suffering. The God of all comfort and the God of how much more. My Christian oncologist told me, Aggie, I'm a good doctor and I will take care of you. But I'm only a doctor. You are stage four. Only God can heal you. As I faced my mortality, I found great comfort in Jeremiah 29, 11 to 12. It says, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Then you will call on me and pray to me, and I will listen to you. The Lord asked me, Aggie, will you give me your hopes, your plans, your dreams, your fears, everything? And I told Jesus, yes, Lord, have your way with me. Be glorified in my cancer, but please make me pretty so I can reflect your glory. <laughs> the Lord reminded me that while he chooses my circumstances, I, can choose my, I should choose my response. And so he led me to Habakkuk. 317, which says, Though the fig tree does not blossom, and there be no fruit in the vines, though the yield of the olive should fail, and the fields produce no food, though the flock should be cut off from the fold, and there will be no cattle in the stalls, yet I will exult in the Lord. So I said, Lord, I make a firm resolve to be joyful regardless of my terminal condition. I held on to the promise in Philippians 4, 6 to 7. Do not be anxious for anything, but in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your hearts, let your requests be made known to God. And the, and the peace that transcends all understanding will guide your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. And so I didn't go through the usual depression that every, almost every cancer patient goes through. Yes, I experienced unexplainable peace and joy during those very tragic days, difficult days of my life. My stormiest chemo days were the best times with God. I had to be isolated from my from the rest of humanity because of my very poor immune system. So for months, the Lord and I had very long walks and talks, and I would play praise music the whole day and simply just rest. But there were also times of extreme nausea, and I would earnestly pray to Jesus, Lord, do not allow me to vomit. My husband has not slept. We only have one bed. I can't mess it up. Please quiet my stomach and comfort me in your embrace. 
It didn't matter anymore where I will wake up with my husband or with you, Lord, forever. Miraculously, I'm able to sleep and rest well even at the height of pain and without vomiting. Indeed, His mercies are new every morning. Each morning, I would wake up refreshed and renewed, thanking and praising Jesus, I'm still alive. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for another day to serve you. My weekly, my weekly trek to the hospital have been very physically difficult and also emotionally challenging. Many times I would hear fellow patients dying. So I found myself kneeling and asking God, Lord, am I next? As I opened the Bible, Jesus gave me these very loving and assuring words of comfort in Psalm 91. And it says, because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him. For he acknowledges my name. And he will call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. It has been almost 16 years since I was diagnosed with stage 4 cancer. The Lord healed me, even reversed my bone lesions. But the best part about the cancer is that now I'm able, I have a platform for sharing God's news of salvation and talk about His faithfulness in almost all training programs I handle. We now have a thriving ministry called Life to the Max. The mission of Life to the Max is to bring comfort and hope to those who are afflicted with cancer and other chronic degenerative diseases. Indeed, there is hope in the big C because the real big C is not cancer. It is Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for allowing me to see beyond the temporal and stretching my faith to experience the eternal. All glory, honor, and praise to Jesus, our Lord and Savior. We are doing a series on the book of Acts kasi po yung truth ay napaka-importante. It really matters. Ano yung truth na yon? Ang design ng Diyos is for us to share the truth. Listen to this. As we have been talking about this for the past several Sundays, in, ano, several Sundays na po, ano sabi ng Bible, ano siya challenge sa atin? We are not just to make a difference. We are to change the world. Kaya yun po ang atin pong pinag-uusapan dito. So, sa book of Acts, nakita ho natin na ito po ay ang hamon ng Panginoon sa so Kristo. That we are to make disciples or we are to be witnesses in Jerusalem in Judea and Samaria and to the, to the uttermost part of the earth. Kaya ito ang sabi sa Acts 1.8, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses, both in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and even to the remotest part of the earth. No, kaya mapapansin ninyo, dito sa outline natin, from chapters 1 to 8, nakita ho na natin doon. Yun po, they, God made a tremendous and powerful work in Jerusalem. Then eventually, they were to be spread. Kaya ho, next week, simula na tayo, papunta na tayo sa Judea and Samaria. Then, sa pagdating sa chapter 13, makikita nyo how the Lord uh, caused His work to spread throughout the other parts of the world. Throughout the world. Talagang amazing si God. Kaya ito po, kaya ho ang Acts, kung naalala ninyo, ito po, the continuing work of Jesus through the Holy Spirit in the lives of the apostles and His people. Us, the church. Okay, man? So, dapat, buhay pa yan sa atin. Hindi nawawala yan sa atin. Kaya ito po ang ating pag-usapan. Bakit po importante that we are to spread this good news? Bakit importante? As we have said, we are to change the world. Tama? Tingnan niyo po ang pangako ni Jesus. Sabi ni Jesus, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. Tingnan niyo niya, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Sa mga nakakilala kay Jesus, ang buhay nila nag-uumapaw. Sabi niya, because the promise of Jesus is for their lives to be abundant. Kaya ho, nag-uumapaw yan, nag-uumapaw. Full, full of life. Kaya ang problema ho, to some of us, akala natin Christian tayo. Kasi yung 
Feeling natin, sinikatin naman tayo eh. Pero malalaman nyo, simple lang, nag-uuma po ba yung buhay mo ng Ka, yung kabuluhan sa buhay kasi yung abandon dito meaningful life eh full of meaning o nag-uumapaw ng sama ng loob ah, yun ang pagtag-usapan na nakuha ninyo kaya ho ang ating topic is live life to the full be spirit filled now bakit po ito importante bakit, anong relasyon yan sa ating passage sabi ni J.K. Testerton every man who visits a prostitute is looking for God Ha? Huh? Totoo ba yan? Now, huwag niyong maisipin niya, baka kailangan niyo, ah, punta na tayo ngayon, huwag ganap tayo ng prostitute kasi hindi ho. At ibig sabihin niya ganito, the reason why people are going and looking for prostitutes because they're looking for satisfaction that only God can provide. Kaya yun ang senyales that they're empty. Yun ang senyales that there is something missing in their hearts. Kaya yung mga nagda-drugs, naghahanap ng something that will make them high, there is something missing in their hearts. They're looking for God. Kaya yung mga naghahanap ng isang mga jackpot na malaking kita, na biglaan, na parang tumama ng loto, yung mga ganong pakaramdam, naghahanap sila sa Diyos. Kasi they're looking for someone who will satisfy them. Yung mga nag-aasam na kaya mag-aasawa ko, hoping na ito magbibigay ng kaligayaan sa akin, ipaglalaban nila yun. Laban sa mga kalooban ng magulang, ipaglalaban nila yun. Pero kasi hoping that they would be satisfied with what they're looking for. Na hindi naman din, kasi eventually, iiwan din sila. Kasi only God can really provide what we are looking for. And to some, hindi pa talaga na nasubukan. Ito rin yung nagsabi ng si G.K. Chesterton. Sabi niya, they, they, ano, Christianity was never found wanting because they tried and they could not. Hindi nila tinuloy. Hindi sila tuloy-tuloy, kaya hinakita nila parang hindi totoo ata to. Kaya maraming tao ganito, pag nakikinig sila ng message, parang, Amen! Pagdating lunes, bakit hindi ganyan? Martes, hindi ganyan! Merkel, hindi. Bakit ibang-iba? Eh kasi nga, parang kay Peter yan eh. Lord, kung talagang ikaw yan, ano, papuntahin mo ako sa'yo. Naalala nyo yun, nasa tubig, nasa bangka siya, kasi Lord naglalakad sa, sa dagat, nakatayo sa dagat, sabi niya, Lord, kung talaga ikaw yan, ano, papuntahin mo ako sa'yo. Eh halimbawa, wala ikaw yun. Ang sabi ni Lord, o, oh, alika na. Joke lang. <laughs> Maraming ganun eh. Parang, yes, gusto ko yan, Lord. Amen. Bo, alika na. <laughs> Joke lang, Lord. Ang kakatakot. Eh, iba, sumubok naman. Yung wakbang. <laughs> eh, lang may bagyo. <laughs> Balik ulit agad. Balik agad. Normally, ganyan ang ginagawa ng maraming tao. They really never tried. Kaya ho, itong malungkot. Oh, pasensya na kayo ha. Itong malungkot na parte. Isa lang yung buhay natin. Kasabi ni Lillian Dixon, sabi niya, life is like a coin. You can spend it anyhow you wish, but you can spend it only once. Si Lillian Dixon po ay siya po yung founder ng Mustard Seed International uh, sa isa pong missionary. Kasabi niya, alam mo, buhay natin para lang yung ano eh, uh, pera, minsan mo lang magagastos. Okay pa? Pwede sabihin mo sa katabi mo. Kaibigan, seryosohin mong buhay mo dahil minsan mo lang yung gagamitin. At ang totoo niyan, napakaikli. Hindi mo namamalayan. Kanina binabasa ko sa news, di ba yung nagbabiyahe lang sila, bumaligtad niyo sa sakyan. Patay, life is so short. Life is so short to miss the fullness of it. Okay? So ano yung fullness ng life? So isa-isahin natin. Tingnan ho natin ito ng mabuti. Paano natin malalaman that we have a full life? Now, tinan po natin si Stephen. Ito yung ating pag-uusapan. Therefore, brethren, remember last week, nagka-problema sila? Di ba? Ano yung problema nila? Yung mga byuda na Hellenistic, ibig sabihin, ito yung mga galing sa ibang bansa, doon sila, doon sila nag, nabuhay, na namatay ni asawa nila, bumalik sila ngayon sa Israel. Okay, bumalik sila sa Israel, grego na sila, grego na yung salita nila, ng byuda na sila, nang bumalik sila sa Israel, nung nagbibigay ng mga pagkain, sila ang hindi nabibigyan. Now, hindi sila nagre-reklamo, ha? baka mamisinterpret niyo. Yung mga byuda, hindi nagre-reklamo. Ang nagre-reklamo, yung mga tao sa paligid nila, kawawa naman yung mga byuda natin. Kawawa naman, di sila napapansin. Tama? So, sabi ni Peter, balik siya, hindi namin pwedeng, ano, 
iba, sa, sa, siyang tabi yung pag-aaral at pananalangin, sabi niya, they understood their priorities. E sabi nga noon, kaya mamili kayo ng mga tao. Ito niya, select from among you seven men. Look at the words. What kind of people? Good reputation, full of the spirit and of wisdom. Whom we, whom we may put in charge of this task. So, ibig sabihin, yung, yung kwalidad ng mga tao magsisilbi, magsisilbi lang lang ng table, ha? Kailangan mag, may maganda reputasyon, sabi nga noon, punong-puno ng spirito at katalinuhan. Amazing! At nung namili na sila, nakapili na sila ng pito. The statement found approval with the whole congregation and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. Wow! Kung nung namili na sila, namili talaga ito. Now look at this. Ang panawagan ni Stephen is to be witnesses for the Lord. Tama? Ang witnesses, hindi lamang yan limited sa pagpipreach, ito ay makikita on how we behave as one body. Nalaman mo, itong mga tao to, mga widows, nangangailangan ng tulong, they solve it, and one of the ways for Stephen to be a faithful witness, he was one of those who took charge of helping the widows or feeding the widows. Nakuha niyo? Ay kayo, naka, 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 nasa labas tayo, nanonood tayo. Ang grabe, bait ng mga Christians. So, hindi nila pinabayaan yung mga widows nila. Yung unang napabayaan nung nagreklamo, hindi nila binaliwala yung reklamo. Talagang ginawa nila ng aksyon. At nung nakita, nagsisilbi ito sila Stephen at ang mga Stephen ito, amazing. They so loving. And look at the effect. In Acts 7, the word of God kept on spreading and the number of the disciples continued to increase greatly in Jerusalem. And a great many of the priests were becoming obedient to the faith. Pati yung mga saserdote, sabi niya, totoo to. Tama yung sinabi ni Jesus. They will know that you are my disciples because you love one another. Nagkakanilihan tayo? Hello? Hindi alam niyo ba ngayon, misan, pare-pareho nagbabasa ng Bible? Nagsisiraan. Nag-aaway. Ano ba yan? Osas ka ba? Ano yung osas? One safe, always safe? O hindi. Mag-aaway yan. Eh, ano ba kayo? Bakit yung pinag-aawayan yan? Ano ba maligtas si Jesus Christ? Period! Whether forever yan o hindi, pagtatalunan pa ba natin yan? Nakuha ninyo? Hello? Minsan, nakita, ay, nakita ko yan, nagsisip yan. Nag- nag-aaser yan. Tapos habang naglalakad, ang kapal ng mukha niyan. Mandaraya yan. Nung nag-aaser yan, pero nang daraya yan. Nung meron kami ano, dinaya kami. Bakit mo gaganyanin? Kung talagang kapatid mo yan, huwag mong ganyanin. Ganito, lapitan mo siya. Kapatid, nakita kita. Dinaya mo ako noon. Alam mo. A- ano ba yun? Nung hindi ka pa ba Christian noon? O Christian ka na? Kung Christian ka na, magsisi ka. Ah. O kasi kung kapatid mo yan, i-rebuke mo. Open rebuke is better than hidden love. Hindi yung i-chase mismo kung kanina-kanino. Hello? Alam niyo, minsan nakakalungkot, no? Minsan, tayo-tayo na, sabi natin magkakapatid, nag- ano pa tayo, nagsisiraan tayo sa isa't isa. Kunyari, ah, hindi ka taka CCF. Hindi <laughs> ka Christian. <laughs> ano ba yun? Hindi naman exclusive yun sa CCF lang, eh. Di ba? Ikaw, ibig sabihin, alam nila sa pagmamahal pa lang. Hindi nyo ba napansin, pag napunta kayo sa ibang bansa, nakita kayo ng Christian, para nakakagaan ng kay kagad ng loob. Hindi nyo napansin, no? <laughs> Di ba? Parang, Christian ka, no? Eh, sa totoo lang, naminsan, naglalakad kami sa airport ng Vancouver, ha? Naghahanap kami ng makakain ng misis ko. Naglalakad kami ganun, ang mahal lahat, ang mahal lahat. Kaya di, kala lang kami, titingin-tingin lang, umupo sa may table, Mami, may mama, nakatitig sa akin ganyan, no? Sabi ko, kinabahan ako, layo na tayo kasi tinititigan niya ako, eh. Sabi niya, di layo ako, eh. Mas, sumunod pa, sumunod yung mama! Sabi niya, Pastor Bong, ay, naku, ha. <laughs> Opo, sabi niya, nanunod ako sa inyo, ah, ganun po ba? Naku, salamat naman po. Naku, sandali lang, dyan lang ho kayo, dyan lang ho kayo. Huwag ho kayo aalis. Ganun, hindi naman kami umalis, di nandun lang kami, talaga naman doon lang naman kami. <laughs> <laughs> Aba, mami ko, tinag-order ng pagkain. Sabi ko, hindi ka lang kapatid, anghel ka. <laughs> Alam ng Lord ang pangangailangan namin, pero ito ka, nagpakain. Pinakain kami. Naskwentuhan na kami para kami magkapatid na matagal ng, alam niyo, magkakilala. Parang, wow. Bakit? Because we know we are with one spirit in the Lord. Naintindihan po? Kaya doon pa lang, alam mo, wow. Kaya hindi naman yung mga tao to, they, Yan parang witnesses na yan. 
Yung witnessing na yan, kasi bakit? Dito na nakikita na ng mga tao, Christian kayo. Pag nakita yung pamilya nyo, Christian kayong pamilya, no? Iba kayo magmahalan, eh. Iba kayo magmalasakit sa isa't isa. Di ba? Iba kayo. At saka, kung, kung mag, ano, masaya kayo sa bahay, nakakarinig kami ng mga, mga kantahan. Hindi no? Hindi yung, Christian kayo? Iba yung saya nyo, ah. Parang nagbabasa ka kayo ng plato lagi. Ano meron dyan? <laughs> <laughs> ang hirap naman ng ganun. So, you have to see it. Iba kayo. Kaya nga nung isang, isang mama, kalit na galit sa, ano, takot na takot siya sa Christian, no? Kasi he became atheist dahil sa inis niya sa buhay. Until one day, meron siyang kliyente, sabi niya, I cannot understand you. Kakaiba yung, ano mo, yung smile mo, yung saya mo. Sabi niya, what is your secret? You join us. Sabi niya, you join us. Di, di na lang niya ngayon sa service. Pagdating sa service, yung ali nakakilala sa Panginoong Diyos. Amin, alam niyo kung saan yun? Sa communist country. E nung na, yung, yung, sorry, hindi ale, mama, yung mama, bigla na lang nung maging masaya na siya, tapos damang-tama, pinadalan siya ng isang, ano, na isang an agent na, ano, kala, na datarba sa gobyerno. Naku po, tinutukan ng bari, sabi niya, Christian ka, no? Kabang ka ba? Takot na takot. Biglang nag-pray. Sige, Panginoon, hindi ko na po alam. Gagawin ko. Anong gagawin ko rito? Panginoon Diyos, tulungan mo ako. Eh, sinang dalawa na lang. Sila, yung killer niya, tsaka ano eh. Tsaka sinang dalawa lang eh. Bigla sabi niya, tinitigan niya yung killer niya. Sabi niya, alam mo, ikaw din may takot ka ano. Kailangan mo si Jesus. And because of that conversation, that man, iniwan niya yung baril niya and accepted Jesus Christ as his Savior. Saan nakita? Iba yung mukha eh. Mula sa takot, dahil sa nagpray siya, biglang nakaramdam siya ng, ng kapayapaan sa mukha and doon siya nakapagsalita ng maayos. Amazing! Kaya doon mo maintindihan ng Christian, hindi ko masinasabi na lagi kang masaya. Kaya, minsan, pagka malungkot ka na, you just pray and magtataka ka how you will change. Di ba? Because you know the power of God. Tingnan mo yung katabi mo. Halatang Christian, di ba? Naalala niyo si, naalala niyo si Martin Luther nung umuwi. Nasa nakaitim si Katie, yung kanyang asawa. Sabi niya, ba't ka nakaitim? Patay ang Diyos. Anong, ka, anong kalapas tanganan siya sabi mo? That's blasphemous. Sabi niya, bakit mo sinasabing patay ang Diyos? Sabi niya, God is alive. No, 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 God is dead. Sabi niya, how dare you? Sabi niya, alam mo Martin, every time I look at you, you're so worried, you're so down, your face is really so, parang, parang, ano, parang stressed. Sabi niya, I think God is dead. Bigla siya nagsisi, oh, I'm sorry. Hiyang-hiya siya. Bakit doon niya nang narealize, hindi nakikita yung, yung confidence sa Diyos dahil sa mukha pa lang, problemadong problemado na. Oh, tingnan mo yung katabi mo. Sabi mo, alam mo, God is alive. Al- itong amazing. Itong si Stephen na to, alam niyo ba kung ilang taon siya? Based on ano, tra- tradition, 29 years old noong nangyayari ito. Now, in Acts 6 8, itong continuation. Though he was serving in the church, many were coming to God, to Christ. And Stephen, apa hindi natapos doon, full of grace and power, was performing great wonders and signs among the people. Wow, amazing! Hindi lang siya nagsisilbi for the body, testifying and witnessing Jesus as a body. He was also personally ministering to people. Nung una, it was only the apostles, only in the hands of the apostles that there were signs and wonders. Doon yung makikita, God is not limited with His leadership. He can do anything to anybody, even to the ordinary people, if they are willing to be used by God. And look at the words. And Stephen, full of grace and power. Pag sinabi mong full of grace, from the word grace, unmerited favor. Pag nakita mong si Stephen, full of grace and power, what does it mean? Para pagang, pag-isipan niyo mabuti, this guy, how could he preach? How could he minister? Wala sa itsura niya, wala sa pagkatao niya, wala siyang qualification of anything to do such a thing. It's only by the grace of God. Now, tingnan niyo po sila Peter, when they were preaching, they were unlearned, uneducated, and yet they were able to preach with confidence and testify about Jesus. Why? All by the grace of God. Ano ibig sabihin? Lahat tayo from one way or another, may takot tayo to share the gospel. Sino dito matapang mag-share ng gospel? Even if you're a salesman, even if you're an experience as in, experience ka sa, pag, sa pagtitinda ng kung ano-anong bagay. I'm telling you, when, it beca- when you begin to share Jesus, bigla kang kinakabahan. 
alam mo na it's only by the grace of God. Hindi natin kaya yun. Kahit kung nagpastor ako, trust me, prayer ko sa Lord, Lord, ba't ako? Bakit hindi yung kuya ko? Yun ang matalino, yun ang valedictorian, yun ang, ano, yun ang university scholar. Ako, Lord, hindi ako marunong. Hindi ako marunong mag-preach. Hindi ako marunong mag-English. Lord, maawa ka sa akin. Ano sabi ng Lord? Kaya nga ikaw pinili ko eh. Para malaman mong hindi mo kaya. Pero kaya ko. So people who would listen to you, they would know it's only by the grace of God. Nakakaintindihan po? Kaya walang excuse, walang pensabihin. Hindi ako marunong, hindi ako marunong. No, if you are like Stephen, full of, as in, todo sa Diyos, by the Holy Spirit, by the fullness of God's grace, He can make use of you. And imagine, He was performing great wonders. Look at the words. And signs among the people. He was healing the sick, as in, performing miracles after miracles just for them to be pointed to Jesus. Bakit? All by the grace of God. Hindi, wala namang magaling sa atin dito para magaling, magpagaling ng mga may sakit. Only by the grace of the Lord. Now listen, hindi to sa talino ng tao, hindi to sa galing ng tao, it's all by His grace. Bakit importante yan? Kasi ito yung challenge, tinan niyo po. Ito, si Peter, nung nag-preach, makapangyari yan, dami nagre-repent. Ito ang amazing. Nung nag-preach siya, with the grace of God, with the power of God, Mayroong mga nagalit. O, tinan nyo. But some men from what was called the synagogue of the freedmen. Na pag sinabi niyong freedmen, ito ho yung mga prisoners of war. Ito yung natalo ho nila General Pompey. Tapos nakasakop sila and eventually they became slave. And after several years of ano, imprisonment, slavery, they were freed. So they were freed. But these are really fighters, warriors din ito. Natalo lang. Now, including both in Cyrenians, Alexandrians, and some from Cilicia, Asia, rose up and argued with Stephen. Inawe! Nakipagtalo kay Stephen. Now, bakit ko ito kinekwento sa inyo? Ito pang ginawa kay Stephen. Para maintindi, advance natin muna. Mag, ano tayo, mag, ano, punta tayo sa 758. And when they had driven him out of the city, kinaladkad yung Stephen, 29 years old, itong mamang to, lalaki, kinaladkad, mga warriors, began stoning him and the witnesses laid aside the robes at the feet of a young man named Saul. Now, tinan nyo, then falling on his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. Having said this, he fell asleep. Now, listen to this. Paano siya nakatulog ng ganyan? Ibig sabihin, nung mamatay siya, hindi nagsisig, ah, 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 walang ganon. Pug! Lord, bilang sa kanta, pug! Tapos, pug! Lord, thank you. Tapos tulog na. na. Parang, alam niyo kung bakit kung tinakita sa inyo ito mabuti? Tingnan niyo ha, maraming tao hindi makaka... Mamamatay pa lang, nakikipag-away na. Alam niyo ba yan? Merong pagtatalo na. Ibig sabihin, hindi sila at peace to die. Now, bakit? Tingnan niyo, halimbawa na si Ananias. When he, Ananias fell down, bog, and breathed his last. Hindi asleep yan. Biglang tagang patay. Asawa niya, ganun din, because he, she was lying. She fell at his feet and breathed her last. Amazing. Diba? Ibang-iba ito. Binabato na, tinulugan lang. Patay. Bakit? Kasi, ang nakita niya ito, Behold, I see the heavens open up and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Now, para maintindihan niyo to, si Jesus, every time He was being described in other passages, He was sat, sat, sitting, sat down at the right hand of God Sa, ano, he will be seated at the right hand of God as in niya, right hand of God again, seated at the right hand of God mapapansin nyo, sat down at the right hand of God yan lahat ng yan ang ibig sabihin yan hindi yung pangalawang uh, second in command hindi ganun, kasi sa atin agad-agad pag nasa kanan, right hand of God second in command, hindi ganun ang ibig sabihin yan, parang yung general went to a warfare, bumalik panalo na, and sabi nung ano, pinakahiking Upo ka sa kanan because I am so pleased with what you have accomplished. Okay, man? Meaning to say, upo ka na because everything is finished. Remember the last word of Jesus Christ? It is finished. So, because everything is paid. Everything is okay. Now, eh, paano to si Stephen? Tapos na, di ba? Eh, bakit siya tumayo? Kasi nung namatay si Stephen, nung binabato na si Stephen, sabi niya, Lord, receive my spirit. Tumayo si Jesus. Alam niyo bang ibig sabihin nun? 
he was showing great respect and honor for the man. Parang sasabi niya, parang alam niya yung standing ovation. Wow! Stephen! You're good. Ano yung sasabi ng Lord? Pag-receive niya kay Stephen, well, full welcome saying, Stephen, I am, you are, you are mine. Alam niyo, doon mo malalaman that you are really living in the full. Yung bang, pag namatay ka ba, you would be, are, are you really confident na masasabi mong si Jesus would stand up and say, ano pangalan mo, iho? George. 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 Nakaupo si Jesus. Oh, George. Oh, George. All the angels of heaven, let's welcome George. No, ganon. Oh, pagdating doon, why are you here, George? Stay away from me, George. I never knew. We've never, we never had a relationship, George. Get out of my face, George. Sa palagay mo. Anong klaseng welcome? Kaya ho, ito yung challenge ng Lord. Live to the full. So how would you know that you're living to the fullest? Are you a witness in and out of your place? Are you a witness sa church o sa labas? Wherever you are, you are a witness of Jesus. Bakit? You know you are living to the full if you are focused to your calling, the very calling that God has for you. Kasi kung nabubuhay ka just for you to survive on this world and to have your own personal kingdom established, what's the point? Yun yung sinasabi ni Ate Agi. Sabi niya, nung gumaling ako, at least nagkaroon ako ng avenue. Nagkaroon ako ng avenue na ma-share si Jesus Christ. Sa totoo lang, when I was dying, I wasn't afraid. You know why? I may sleep or I may wake up with my husband or with Jesus forever. Di ba ang sarap ng ganong confidence na no matter what happens, alam mo, you will be with God. Kasi mga sabi sa katabi mo, live to the full. Be filled with the Spirit. Yun ang ating challenge. Live to the full. Be filled with the Spirit. Bakit? Because that's our calling. If we are faithful as witnesses of Jesus Christ, as in full with the power of God, whether at home, whether in the office, whether in the church, wherever we are, they could see Jesus in us. And you are faithful at the end. Nakakapagod. Bisa mo, oh Lord, pagod ako. Parang they took advantage of me. Yung mga office mate ko, hindi na lang nagtatrabaho. Ako lahat gumagawa. And I'm just doing it for you, Lord. But they're so unfair. And sabi ng Lord, no problem. Pagdating mo sa langit, yes, the great worker of mine in the office of this so-and-so. Nakuha ninyo? Hindi naman parang, sila tamad? Ako din, bahala kayo. Diba? Hindi na eh. Ikaw na parang nagpaksa, nagpasunod ka sa kala. Wag! Kunyari, asawa mo. Lord, yung asawa ko, hindi umuwi ng maayos. Lasing lagi. But I was there, Lord, serving with full submission because I'm doing this for you, Lord. I didn't even know whether he naging Christian siya o hindi. Ang isang bagay lang sa amin, Lord. But you live to the full. Come. Come. Diba? Nakakatindihan? Minsan yung mga magulang natin, Ang gugulang din eh. But you just keep on worship, eh, you know, respecting the parents. Lord, I'm doing this so that they would be saved somehow. Kung hindi naligtas, but one thing I know, my Jesus is pleased because I live to the fullest as His witness. Nakuha niyo po? Kaya ito po, papano? Ito, tingnan niyo ha. Balik tayo. So in the spirit with which was speaking, he was full of the Holy Spirit. And they secretly induced men to say, we have heard him speak blasphemous word against Moses and against God. Now, tinisiraan nila ngayon. Tingnan nyo to, ha? These are religious people. They were in the synagogue. These are, these are people, the synagogue of freedmen. Ibig sabihin, pag synagogue of freedmen, mga nagwo-worship ito. Ibig sabihin, talagang religious ito. Tama? But, since they could not Ano, parang debate with ano, Stephen, parang hindi lang mas, ma, ano talaga, mapigilan si Stephen, ginawa nila, nag, ano sila, parang, parang, ano, parang tag doon, naglalagay sila sa mga tao, para siraan natin, magtayo kayong false witness, ganyan. Di ba? Pero induce eh. Yung word na induce, talagang tinulungan na, talagang siguro sinuhulan, ganyan. Tapos ito na. Eh, simple lang, if you are truly religious, bakit you're doing a religious thing? Tingnan nyo ha? Sabi nila daw siya not bear full witness against your neighbor. Tama? Pero binabayaran mo, ini-induce mo pa sa kanya. Para sa'yo. Ito. Di ba? 
Parang ang labo. Hindi sumusunod sa Diyos. So to make the long story short, ito na. And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes. Look at this. These are religious leaders. And they came up to him and dragged him away and brought him before the council. And they put forward false witnesses. Said, this man incessantly speak against this holy place and the law. And sabi niya, for we have heard him say, this Nazarene Jesus will destroy this place and alter the customs which Moses handed down to us. No, ano nangyayari dito? No, dito pa lang magkakaroon tayo ng hint kung ano pinipreach. Okay? Tingnan natin, from this passage, makik- na titrace na, ano kayo pinipreach ito? Naalala nyo, sabi ni Jesus, sabi ni Jesus, alam nyo, time will come, destroy this temple, sabi niya ganun, and I will raise it up in three days. So what Jesus was trying to say, this is now the temple. The temple you have is just a picture of me. Nakuha niya. Nakuha natin. And in fact, 70, ramya, one day, this temple will be destroyed. Hindi siya magdi-destroy. It will be destroyed. In fact, in AD 70, the whole temple was really destroyed. Nakuha. So, most probably, itong si, si Stephen nagpipreach ng ganoon that Jesus is the only way to the Father, no longer the temple. So, sabi nila, malabo to! Sinisiraan niya na si Moses, sinisiraan niya na kasi ang mga tao, kadalasan, ang iniisip nila kagad, yung building ang church, yun doon sila sasamba, doon sila mabait, paglabas, di bali na, wala ng kwenta yan, yung ganoon. O kaya naman, yung may mga rules, kaya, kailangan, kaya iba, basta linggo, mag-attentay ng service, di bali wala ka naintindihan sa message, okay lang yun, basta nagawa mo yan tuwing linggo, babawasan ng mga kasalanan mo. Ganyan. Ganun ang kaisipan ng tao eh. Parang bag nakasama ka na dito, okay na yan. Hindi, hindi ganun si sabi ni Jesus. Kaya sabi ni Lord, tinan natin, tuloy tayo. Tinan nyo, sa Hebrews. But when Christ appeared as a high priest of the good things to come, He entered to the greater and more perfect tabernacle. Remember the temple is based on the tabernacle. Ito yung mas magandang, mag- magandang or ma- grandeur design ng tabernacle. Not made with hands, that is to say, not of this creation, and not through the blood of goats and calves, but through His own blood. He entered the holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of heifer sprinkling those who have been defiled sanctify for the cleansing for the flesh, how much more with the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered Himself without blemish to God, cleanse your conscience from the dead works to serve the living God. Ano sinasabi niya? Sabi niya, ito na yung sukli. Oh, ito na yung sinasabi ni Jesus. Sabi niya, hindi na yung temple before you feel accepted and forgiven by God once you offer blood sacrifices by the high priest. But this time, the high priest himself offered his own blood once and for all. Ano sinasabi niya? Wala ka ibang paraan maligtas only through Jesus Christ. Gusto ko masabi sa inyo to. Becoming a member of CCF does not mean you're a member of Jesus Christ. Okay, Ben? Hello? Attending every Sunday does not mean you belong to Jesus. Iba ho yun. Yun ang sinasabi ni, ni Stephen. Kaya galit na galit sila. Ibig sabihin, wala nang kwenta itong temple na to. Ibig sabihin, talaga, that's blasphemy. Nakuha ninyo? Now, anong ginawa ho ni? Anong ginawa ho nila? Tuluhin natin. Tuluhin natin, ha? Sabi niya, for this reason, He is the mediator of the new covenant. So that since the death has taken place of the redemption of the transgression that were committed under the first covenant, those who have been called may receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Ano sinasabi ni, 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 ni Stephen? Ano sinasabi niya? Kaya they seemingly felt, wow, blaspheme niya yung temple. Sinabi niya, hindi na kailangan yung law. Sabi ni ano, no, Jesus is the fulfillment of them all. Kasi sabi ni Jesus, I did not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law. Nagkakanid yan. Okay tayo? Okay, good. Now, tuloy tayo. Sabi ni Lord. And, nung ginaganyan na siya, nililitis siya, and fixing their gaze on him, all who were sitting in the council saw his face like the face of an angel. Alam niyo po nung ina-imagine ko po siya, sabi ko, wow, ko ako yun, A- ako, I just want to be honest with you, ko ako yung dinrag, tapos nililitis, maguro kakabahan din ako, no? Para, na- nakuha ninyo? Hindi ko, hindi ko alam kung sakali mangyari yan sa akin, sabi ko, siguro ang tindi ng tagudog ng puso ko. Pero ito, grabe, Relax. 
At galang mo relax, yung muka, sabi ganun, parang anghel. <laughs> Ako hindi ko ma-imagine, paano bang muka ng anghel? Hindi, nee, totoo lang. Kasi kung nakikita ko yung mga, ba- yung mga baby na nakakainan na statwa, ang cute nga naman. <laughs> parang kalmado. What it, it reflects gentleness, calmness, and firmness. Ito yung mga anghel. Now, sabi nila, sa aura pa lang ng tao, alam mo kung anong nilalaman ng loob. Okay ba yan? Di ba? No, parang yung aura pa lang, dalag, dalag, dalag lang mo ng may kapayapaan eh. Di ba? Hindi yung maraming agam-agam sa buhay. Now, so, itong lahat ng ito were done because He was full of the Holy Spirit. Now, tanong. Madali na sabihin, Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit. That's good. But there is a fruit. You can easily know whether you really prayed right and you really believed right that you are filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay po? Gusto niyo masigurado? so that you can live the fullness of life. Tatlong S lang po para sa ating aralin ngayon. Scripture, strength of character, and surrendered spirit. Once you know that you're full of the Holy Spirit, you have a different attitude towards the Scripture, you have a strength of character, and surrendered spirit. Isa-isay natin. Tingnan niyo po si, si, ano, si Stephen. But some men from what was called the synagogue of the freedmen, including the Cyrenian, Alexandrian, and some from Felicia and Asia, rose up and argued with Stephen. Now, do nakikipag-argue na, look at Stephen. They could not answer him. Why? Sabi ni, John, ni Jesus, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. This is just an ordinary guy. He was not an apostle. He was just a server of the table. And yet, ito siya. He knew how to operate in the fullness of the Holy Spirit because he has such a, a great love for the Word of God. Kasi, tinan mo, he will re- bring you into remembrance. Hindi mo maaalala isang bagay na hindi mo binabasa. Hindi mo maaalala isang bagay na hindi mo minememorize. Napansin niyo po ba yun? Kaya nga sa atin, we challenge people, you memorize, you memorize. Hindi natin problema yan kapag may, kung mayroong niyang Espiritu na Santo, hindi niya yan, may memorizing yan, hindi niya kailangan tulak-tulak mo sa lalamunan niya, mag-memorize ka, bibigyan ka tanangan ko, ano-ano, ha? Hindi, hindi mo kailangan gawin yan. Kasi kung mahal mo ang Diyos at yung Holy Spirit ang at work in you, eh, may memorize mo yan. Nobody told me to memorize the scripture. Nobody told me and challenged me to memorize verses. Basta sa kakabasa, kababasa ka, na may memorize mo kasi gustong gusto mo siya Hello? Kahit nga joke eh, sa tuwa mo, pag nagustuhan mo, maaalala mo. Katulad ng bagong joke ngayon, mas mabuting umigib kaysa umibig. <laughs> Parang, poko, naaalala mo agad eh, kasi gusto mo eh, hindi mo naman minemorize sa dya yun. Diba? Oh, tignan nyo. Balik tayo dito. Sa pagdating sa verse 10, but they were unable to cope with the wisdom and the spirit with which he was speaking. With the spirit. Bakit? It was the spirit speaking to him. Now, listen to this. Sabi ng Bible, if you read Colossians, let the word of Christ richly dwell within you. Paano yun? With all wisdom, teaching, and admonishing one another, with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Tingnan nyo ha, nung sinulat ni Paul naman ang Ephesians, saying the same thing, but he said it this way, Do not get drunk with wine, for that is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. They are speaking to one another in psalm, hymns, spiritual songs, singing and making melody within your heart to the Lord. Tingnan nyo, pagpantayin natin. Tingnan nyo ha, filled, speaking to one another in psalms. Look at this, Word of Christ needs to dwell in you, Admonishing one another with psalm, hymns, spiritual songs, singing with thanksgiving. In other words, if you are filled with the Holy Spirit, what Paul is saying, you will surely allow the words of Jesus Christ to richly dwell within you. Okay po? Kasi ang unang gagawin ng Holy Spirit sa'yo, gugustuhin mo yung Bible, gugustuhin mo yung salita niya eh. Bigla mong hinaasam-asam. Bakit? Because the Bible, the Word of God, is Jesus Himself. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, remember? And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So, the desire, the, kaya mo ginabasa yung Bible, because I, I began to be so in love with Jesus, and I want to know Him more. Now, tinan niyo po ito. Sabi ng Hebrews, And the Holy Spirit also testifies to us, for after saying, 
This is the covenant that I will make with them. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws upon their heart and on their mind, I will write them. Amazing. Yung Holy Spirit pa nga, maglalagay sa utak mo. Paano niya gagawin yun? He will steer your heart to desire and to really hung, to be hungry and hunger for the Word. Alam nyo, nung una ako nagbasa ng Bible, trying my best with my own wisdom and ano, ano, parang, uh, uh, intellect na kakayanan, no? yung parang capacity ko, pinasa ko. Alam nyo ba, sabi, basahin mo to, makikilala mo ang Diyos. Pinasa ko naman. Abraham begat Isaac. Isaac begat Jacob. Jacob begat Judah. Ang bigat! Wala talaga ako maintindihan. I did not like it. Sabi ko, kalokohan yung Bible na yan. Ano bang pinagsasabi nila? One day, no sobrang hirap na hirap na ako, parang suko na ako, gusto ko na magpakamatay. Sabi ko, Panginoon Diyos, kung totoo ka, kausapin mo ako. Sabi na itong Bible na to kasalita mo, kausapin mo ako. I didn't know a thing, kaya nga nung binasa ko, tinapong ko eh. Pero nung binuksan ko, hindi ako marunong magbasa, bubuksan ko lang ito ha. Pak! Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Hindi ko siya makalimutan. Because that was the very verse that struck me. I said, God, kung totoo ka, I want to be, uh, to be new. I want to be one with you. Kung totoo to, subukan mo nga. Subok nga. Alam nyo, for some reason, buti na lang, ha, hindi nga nabasa ko doon, at si Judas, nagbigtehin, buti na lang ganun, di ba? Buti hindi ganun. Buti na lang na awa ang Diyos, yun ang nabasa ko. Then I, I began to ask, and sabi niya, be systematic. Biglang binasa ko, I never, I did not even eat anything, basa, basa ako, I was reading Romans, I, plus until one day, biglang yung mga, barka, mga dati kong barkada, pare, ba't di ka na sumasama sa amin? Hindi ka na sumasama sa amin, magkuha ng, mag, mag-shoplift, ganyan. Ba't di ka na sumasama sa inuman? Ano ka? Yabang mo na! Tinulak ka ganyan. Lalabang ka ba? Alam nyo, ang bili ng tatay ko, pag ganyang mga hamunan, sapakin mo na kagad sa may takbo, para nakaisa ka na. At huwag ka na magpapakita ulit. Kaya sabi, ganun lang talagang prinsipyo ng utak namin. Biglang hinam, ano, lalabang ka? Sabi, ganun. Ang paghihiganti ay hindi sa akin, ito'y sa Diyos. Sabi, na, nasusulat. Ha? Padre Damas, ano nangyari sa'yo? Nagulat sila kasi bakit ako nagkukot ng Bible verse? Hindi ko alam yun. Basta bigla na lang. Kasi out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Nagkakanin It is the Holy Spirit that will write that in your heart. Kaya pag wala kang uhaw sa salita ng Diyos, and I believe that most of you, when you came to know Jesus, you were so hungry for the Word. But you just allowed yourself to be defiled and not walk with the Holy Spirit. That's why you began to lose appetite of the Word of God. Kaya I challenge you, get back to the Word. You ask God, Lord, tulungan niyo, bigyan ako ng uhaw. Ba't hindi ako na uhaw? Baka hindi ako Christian. Baka nga, dihingin mo si Jesus sa buhay mo. Nakakatindihan? Kaya marami sa atin, uhaw tayo sa maraming bagay, pero hindi salta ng Diyos. There's something wrong. Kaya sabi ng Bible, tinan nyo, when the Helper comes, whom will send to you from the Father, that is the Spirit of Truth, who proceeds from the Father. He will testify about me. How? Through the Word. And sabi niya, alam nyo, tama ang basa nyo ng Bible. Bakit? Because sabi niya, He will speak and He will disclose to you what is to come. He will glorify me. For He will take of mine and will disclose it to you. Al- pag binasa mo, hindi mag-glorify ang sarili mo. Ang nag-glorify si Jesus. Hello? Doon mo lalo nakikita, Lord, thank you, niligtas mo ako. Katulad na pagbasa mo ng Old Testament, pagbasa mo ng The Commandments of the Lord, bigla mo na-realize, oh nga, tama si Paul. This serves as a tutor to me that I, would, that I need Jesus. Lord, thank you. Hindi yung, gagawin ko to lahat. I will fulfill this. Ah, para maligtas ako. Hindi mo kaya. Hindi mo nga ma-memorize yung Ten Commandments eh. At sabi ng Lord, if you fail on one, trying to, to follow everything, you have already failed in everything. So, paano na? Kasi pa doon mo kita, then I need Jesus. Now I understand why I need Jesus. Now I understand. Kasi it glorifies the Lord. Nagkakanilihan? That is exactly what's happening. Kaya, tinan nyo, pagdating sa Acts, amazing si ano, the high priest said, are these things so? Totoo ba to that you're blaspheming? You're speaking against the temple and Moses. Ano sabi niya? Totoo ba to? Tama? Ano sagot? Sabi niya, he said, Hear me, brethren and fathers, the God of glory appeared to our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia before he lived in Haran. Ano si, in Haran. Ano si sabi niya? He began to speak detailing from Abraham, 
Joseph, Moses, David, and Solomon. Alam na alam niya yung Bible niya. Alam na alam niya. Si Abraham, naalala ninyo? Sabi niya, the Lord called him, leave your country and your relatives and come into the land that I will show you. You know what that's Abraham have? Tino sabi niya, si Abraham, when he came to the Lord, it was the Lord who came, went to Abraham. It was the Lord who revealed His glory to Abraham. There was no temple yet at the time. Yun ang sinasabi niya eh. Wala pang temple. But it was Christ or God's initiative to reach out to Abraham. Kasi isip nila, tayo ang magre-reach out sa Diyos. Hindi mo kaya. Kaya nga si Jesus ang pumarito. Nagkakaunuan? So, ganun pa rin. So, Abraham, holding on to the promise. Ano sabi niya? But whatever nation to which they will be in bondage, I myself will judge, said God. Uh, and after that, they will come out and serve me in this place. In this place. Sabi niya. Now, in Acts 7, sabi niya, the patriarchs became jealous of Joseph and sold him to Egypt. And yet, God was with them. Ano si sabi niya? Look at Joseph, for example. He was, Abraham left the country, left his relative because of the promise of God. Joseph he was sold by his own brothers, but he never gave up. Why? Because he was holding to the promise of God. Ano promise and Diyos? They will kneel down before you. They will bow down before you. Hawak niya lang yung promise. Bakit ganun? Ano ibig sabihin nito lahat na ito? Mamaya, papaliwanag sa inyo. Tuloy tayo. And rescued him from all his affliction and granted him favor and wisdom in the sight of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Pinromote siya ng Lord. At alam mo na itong si, si Joseph, nakadikit kay Lord, pati nung dinala siya ng tukso ni Potiphar's wife, Nakatingin siya, Lord, I cannot sin against my God. Kaya nakahawak siya sa promise ng Diyos. Because if you're holding to the promise of God, you want to please Him. Tama? O, tuloy tayo. But when Jacob heard that there was grain in Egypt, he sent our fathers there for the first time. On the second visit, Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And Joseph's family was disclosed to Pharaoh. But as the time of the promise was approaching, which God has assured to Abraham, look at the words, the people increased and multiplied in Egypt. Laging paulit-ulit yan. Promise, promise, promise. Now, look at this. Until there arose another king over Egypt who knew nothing about Joseph. So, ito na naman. Parang pag tinignan mo, parang imposible na yung promise mangyari. Kasi si Joseph, ano eh, nag, nawala na naman yung nakakilala sa kanya. So, inapinan naman yung mga tao ng Diyos. It was at this time that Moses was born. Hindi na kalimutan ng Diyos ang kanyang mga tao. He was lovely in the sight of God and he was nurtured three months in his father's home. And, sabi, and when he saw one of them being treated unjustly, he defended him and took vengeance of the oppressed by striking down the Egyptian. Aba, ibang klase si Moses. At that time, hindi niya pakilala ang Diyos. Siya ang nagliligtas through his own effort. And he supposed that his brethren understood that God was granting them deliverance through him. But they did not understand. But the one who was enduring his neighbor pushed him away. Who made you ruler and judge over us? Sabi ganon. You do not mean to kill me as you killed the Egyptian yesterday, do you? And sabi niya, and this remark, Moses fled and became an alien in the land of Midian where he became the father of two sons. So, in other words, hindi tinanggap ng mga Israelites na ito yung magiging magliligtas sa kanila. So, sa takot niya, tumakbo! 40 years ulit, nandun siya sa wilderness ng Midian. Now, after 40 years had passed, an angel appeared to him. The wilderness of the Mount of Sinai in the flame of a burning thorn bush. I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God who revealed himself to Abraham is the same God showing himself to Moses. Moses shook with fear and would not venture to look. Now look at this. But the Lord said to him, take off the sandals from your feet for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. Ano yung question? Temple? The only place where you can worship God? Ano sabi niya? No, look at Moses. There was no temple. But the place where God is, is a holy place. Ibig sabihin, you cannot confine God in a temple. Consistent yung kanyang-kanyang theme. Tuloy tayo. I have certainly seen the oppression of my people in Egypt and have heard their groans and I have come down to rescue them. Come now and I will send you to Egypt. You know what, what the Lord is saying? Hindi ako nakalimot sa promise ko. Hindi ako nakalimot. From the time of Abraham to the time of Joseph to the time of Moses, hindi ako nakakalimot sa promise ko. Tuloy tayo. Whom they disown, who made you a ruler and a judge, is the one whom God sent to both a ruler and a deliverer with the help of the angel who appeared to him in the thorn bush. Now listen, this man led them out performing wonders, signs in the land of Egypt, in the Red Sea, and in the wilderness for 40 years, another 40 years. Ito na. Sabi ni Moses, God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brethren. So sabi niya, antayin niyo. After me, God will raise up another. 
Nakuha? So again, another, a promise of deliverance. Ngayon, this is the one who was in the congregation in the wilderness together with the angel who was speaking him on Mount Sinai, who was with our fathers, and he received living oracles to pass on to you. Binigay na ni Moses kung ano yung mga rules. But did you listen? Oh, our fathers were unwilling to be obedient to him, but repudiated him, and in their hearts turned back to Egypt. Yung pa rin ang utak. They, they rebelled against Moses. Our fathers had, had the tabernacle of testimony in the wilderness. Just as spoke to Moses, directed him to make it according to the pattern which he had seen. And dyan ang tabernacle, where God will meet with them. But what did they do? Having received it in their turn, our fathers brought it in with Joshua upon dispossessing the nations whom God drove out before our fathers until the time of David. David found favor in God's sight and asked that he might find a dwelling place for the God of Jacob. Sabi ni God, hindi pwede ikaw. Kaya it was Solomon who built a house for him. Grabe no? Alam na alam niya no? O, tinan niya, sagot niya. However, the Most High does not dwell in houses made by human hands. As the prophet says, Heaven is my throne and earth is the footstool of my feet. What kind of house will you build for me? Says the Lord. Or what place is there for my repose? Sabi niya, was it not my hand which made all these things? You know what he was saying? You've been worshipping this temple. But this is not where I am. You cannot confine me in a temple. I made everything. So, consistent. Subukan natin. Abraham followed God because of a promise. Joseph followed God because of a promise. Dave, ano, Moses followed God because of a promise. And now, David is acting based on a promise. Nakuha niyo po ba? Hello? Ano yung promise? Ang sabi niya, you men who are stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears are always resisting the Holy Spirit. You are doing just as your fathers did. Which one of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? They killed the one who has previously announced the coming of the righteous one who betrayers and murderers you have now become. Ano siya sabi nila? Tinanggihan ninyo when the promise came. Jesus, you murdered him. You crucified him. You rejected him. Just that's what you are doing now. You know, sabi na. Grabe. Tapos sabi ganun, you have received the laws as ordained by angels, yet you did not keep it. Alam niyo, sinasabi niya, these people, they obeyed Jesus just because of the promise. But the truth is this, in Hebrews, all this died in faith without receiving the promises. But having seen them and have welcomed them from a distance and having confessed that they were strangers and exiles on the earth, look at these people. Sabi niya, Abraham, Joseph, Moses, David, they were looking forward to the coming of the righteous one from a distance. Kayo, anong kailangan natin? Nangyari na yan. Pabalik tayong tumitingin. Wala tayong dahilan because we can search the history. We can search whether really Jesus Christ rose from the dead. We can search. Hindi mo pwede sabihin, hindi yan totoo. Wala kang dahilan. Yan ang sasabi ng Lord. That alam mo na ang Holy Spirit at work because you're beginning to see the faithfulness of God in His promises. Kaya naman, alam mo rin na hindi because you are rebelling against those promises. You are not following the words of Christ. Hello? Pakasayang sa tabi mo. Are you hungry for the Word of God? Be honest. Gano ka kauhaw? You know that the Holy Spirit is filled, has filled your heart because He will lead you to glorify Jesus through His Word. Nakakanilihan? Don't kid yourself believing that you are filled with the Holy Spirit and yet you ignore the Word of God. And yet you have no hunger for the Word of God. Now, let's continue. Kaya naman, it developed a strength of character. Paano nangyari yun? Tingnan nyo. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the quick and they began what? Gnashing their teeth at him. Galit na galit. They were filled with anger. They were filled with with, with rage. Galit na galit sila. Sabi niya, galit na galit. Pero tinan niyo ha, tinan niyo. But, oh, di ba? Naranasan niyo na yung parang maraming tao sinisiraan kayo dahil Christian kayo. O kaya, hindi kasi lahat ng tao natutuwa sa atin kahit Christian tayo, di ba? Kahit mabait ang, mabait ang gina, mabuting ginagawa natin, hindi ibig sabihin, ano, matutuwa sila sa atin. May mga pagkakataon na iinis sila sa atin. Tama? Yung boss natin, inutusan kang gumawa ng bagay na hindi maganda. Tapos sabi mo, pasensya na po kayo, hindi ko po magagawa yan, hindi po yan ayon sa kalooban ng Diyos. Anong kalooban ng Diyos? Ang kalooban ko na susunod. Naku, patawarin niyo na po ako. Kung mag-resign ka! Di ba? Minsan nagagalit sila. Kahit anong bait-bait mo. Tama? 
sa asawa, di ba minsan? Kahit ang bait-bait mo na, hindi ka na, um, hindi ka umi, hindi ka na umiinom, hindi ka na nagbabarkada. Tapos ma- malate ka lang ng konti, yung babae, ano, saan ka naman kaya? Samantalang noon, ginugulpi mo lang siya, pok, gaganan na siya. Walang kareklareklamo. Ngayon bumait ka, bigang ang ingay na, ano, bigang gumanan sila, ano nangyari? No, yung mga anak, ang babait na. Talagang inaano pa nang inaabuso pa ng mga magulang. O, bulikan to, bulikan niya, bulikan noon. Inaabuso yung kabutihan. Ikaw naman, opo, opo. Hindi pa rin, oh. Parang, they take advantage of us. And sometimes, you would feel, nakakainis na, hindi ganon. Tinan nyo, ha? These people, they were so angry at you. They want to attack you. They want to destroy you. Itong epekto, pag, but, you know, but, being full of the Holy Spirit, He gazed intently into heaven. Pag sinisiraan ka, kinikriticize ka, ang full of the Holy Spirit, kanto. Pagtingin agad kay God. Hindi yung, sino sabi? Sino sabi? Sino sinas? Ano, ano, ano? Ano sabi mo? Ha? Kala mo sino ka? In the name of Jesus. <laughs> Ganun pe! Ano ka ba? Hindi ganyan. Ang, ang filled with the Holy Spirit, sinisiraan ka. Oh, ano mo, walang niya ka. Magnanakawa raw. Ano talaga ang kwetang tao. Ang sabasama ng ugali mo. Ganun ba? Lord, Tingin kay Lord. Lord, kung totoo siya, baguhin mo ako. Kung mali siya, kung mali siya, tamaan mo siya. <laughs> Lord, balaan mo ako ng ganun, hindi ako mahulog sa, ka- sa kanyang pinaparatang sa akin. Nako yung difference. Kasi si, si, ano, si Stephen, galit na galit sila, but, but being full of the Holy Spirit, a strength of character, instead of retaliating, instead of going against, ito, pumunta siya kay God. Tingin siya kay Lord. Naku ha? Di ba? And sabi niya, and he saw the glory of God. Pag sabi glory of God, he saw the attributes of God. He saw the faithfulness of God. He saw the power of God. He saw the, the, the truthfulness of God. He saw the greatness of God. And sabi niya, and Jesus, standing on the right hand of God, na parang sabi niya, I am with you, Stephen. I applaud you, Stephen. Naku ha? Kaya yun ang effect kasi with the fullness of the Holy Spirit, doon ka nakatingin. Katingnan niyo po ang Bible. Pag full ka with the Holy Spirit, you will be full of joy. You will be full of thanksgiving. Di ba? Thanksgiving. Sabi niya ganun. Tuloy tayo. Sabi niya, full of thanksgiving and ha- full of humility. Be subject to one another in the fear of Christ. Hindi pa laban. Ang laban niya sa kanyang meekness. Because blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Alam niyo sa buhay, nakita ko na ito ng maraming beses. Nakita ko na itong personal. People who attack me, kahit na falsely, they never won. Why? Because God, the fullness of the Holy Spirit, will make you the person that He wants you to be. Not with the person that they thought you to be. Okay, Ben? Isipan nila lahat. Dayain ka nila lahat. Huwag kang gaganti. Tingin ka kay God. At tayaan mo ang Diyos. Di ba? Kasi si God ang reward mo, hindi naman sila eh. Hindi yung rasabihin nila. I don't care if they destroy your reputation. Wala naman tayong reputation pag-iingatan eh. Ang meron tayo, meron tayong Diyos na pupurihin. Amen? Nakakandiyan? That builds the strength of character. That's the effect of the Holy Spirit. And finally, surrendered spirit. Tingnan niyo po. And but they cried out with a loud voice and covered their ears and rushed at him with one impulse. Is that when they had driven him out of the city? And began stoning him. And the witnesses laid aside the robes at the feet of a young man named Saul. And they went on stoning Stephen as he called the Lord and said, Lord Jesus, you know that Jesus is God. Why? Lord Jesus. Sabi niya, receive my spirit. Kung tao yan, how can you pray that? Diba? Receive my spirit. Then falling on his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, etong amazing. Lord, do not hold this sin against them. Having said this, he fell asleep. Sa marami sa atin, whenever we are being attacked, we are being taken advantage of, anong gamit? Lord, pagiganti mo ako. Panginoon, mawalan sila ng mga magulang. Panginoon, sana mamatay sila kagad. At kung mamamatay sila, hindi madaling kamatayan. Yung tipong unti-unti, kalahati muna, isang mata, isang tenga, isang bibig. Nako ninyo, pero ang alam mong full of the Holy Spirit, Lord, you are not seeing them as bodies. They are seeing them as souls with bodies, with eternal at stake. 
that they will face the real judge one day who, will, who is able to bring them to hell. And here, ikaw, the Lord, please take not this. Lord, do not hold this sin against them. Lord, please. Ano siya sabi niya? Lord, iligtas niyo po sila. Kasi yung kalang nakikita, pansamantala lang, tagumpay nila ngayon. But God, since I'm seeing you now, there is still life after this. And Lord, maawa ka sa kanila. Iligtas mo pa rin sila. You know the Holy Spirit is at work in you. You don't bear grudges. Ang heart mo, Lord, iligtas mo pa rin sila. Bring them to eternity with you. Alam niyo ba, nung mamatay si Voltaire, kawawa. He was against God. He did not believe in the Lord. He, pray, he even said, I will prove to you that Christianity is a myth. Ano nangyari when he was dying? I am abandoned by God. And man, I shall go to hell. Si Joseph Stalin, lumaki sa Christian family. Ang tapang, daming pinapatay. Even the Christians, he tortured them. Ano sabi na? Nung anak niya, si Svetlana, sinabi niya ito sa Newsweek, my father died a difficult and terrible death. At what seemed the very moment, he suddenly opened his eyes and cast a glance over everyone in the room. It was a terrible glance, insane or perhaps angry, full of fear of death. At tinan niyo, si Sir Francis Newport, head of the Inf- English Infidel Club, sabi niya, you need not tell me there is no God. Kapalibot yung mga membro ng club and that I am in His angry presence, you need not tell me there is no hell, for I already feel my soul sleeping to its fires. Riches, cease your idle talk about there being hope for me. I know I am lost forever. See, yung chancellor ng England noon, na yabang-yabang din, he does not believe in the Lord. I mean, Sir Thomas Scott, until this moment, I thought there was neither God nor hell. Now I know and feel that there are both, and I am doomed to perdition by the just judgment of the Almighty. Grabe. Pero ibang-iba yung papano welcome ng death yung mga Christians na nagmamahal kay Jesus. One of them is well-known in preaching about the love of God na ang pangalan ng Moody Bible Institute was named after him. Itong sinabi niya nung mamamatay na siya. Declaring the love of God to people to all over the world. Alam niyo, nakakatuwa nung mamamatay siya. Sabi niya, Earth recedes. Heaven opens. I've been through the gates. Don't call me back if this is death. It is sweet. Dwight, Irene, see the children's faces. Nakikita niya na yung mga mahal niya sa buhay. Nakita niya si Jesus. Ham niyo, wow, ang sarap. Ito pa, amazing. Si John Leith, yung unang-unang missionary ng Amerika. Sabi niya, can this be death? Ng England. Sabi niya, why it is better than living? Tell them I die happy in Jesus. Saya-saya. Kakatawa, no? Kaya tala-tama si John Knox. Live in Christ and the flesh need not fear death. And alam niyo, Stephen did not die. He was with Jesus. And in fact, his testimony remained. Because, alam nyo ba nangyari? Ang bata kasi sabi, sayang buhay niya, no? Nakakapag-preach, nakakapag-perform ng miracles, 29 years old, patay na! Sayang naman. Hindi yun sayang because he lived to the fullest. At tinan nyo effect. Sabi ni Paul in his testimony, and I said, Lord, they themselves understand that in one synagogue after another, I used to imprison and beat those who believe in you. And when the blood of your witness, Stephen, was being shed, I also was standing by approving and watching out for the coats of those who were slaying him. Kaya naman, Lord, when he, the Lord said, He said to me, Go, for I will send you far away to the Gentiles. I followed. Why? I saw it. Madali niya nang tanggapin. I saw him. Nakakanindihan. Tuloy ang buhay. Kapatid, you ask yourself, have you lived to the fullest? Maaring sabihin nyo, paano yun? Dami ko ng pagkukulang. Walang problema. History does not define your life. Your destiny defines your life. It is what you do today onwards is more important what you have done, what you have done in the past. Okay? Shall we just close our eyes and open, and bow down our heads? Mga kapatid, alam mo, kilala mo kung sino ka. Alam mo, totoo mong katatayuan. Huwag mong biruin ang sarili mo. Claiming that you belong to Jesus and the Holy Spirit is in you. Simple lang, tanongin mo sarili mo, am I really hungry for the Word of God? Do I really want to honor Jesus? Do I, am I developing strength in my character that God is really changing me from glory to glory? Do I have a surrendered spirit? 
na hindi ko pinaglalaban yung sarili ko, hindi ko pinaglalaban yung gusto ko, kundi pinaglalaban ko, Lord, yung gusto mo, I totally surrender my will to you, Jesus. Kapatid, if that is not yet true in your life, for sure, even if you decide to live to the fullest, you'll never make it because you need the power of God. You need the grace of God. You need the wisdom of God. You need the courage of God in order for you to experience what Stephen experienced, the fullness of life. And hearing and seeing Jesus one day, welcoming you with open arms and saying, Son, I applaud you. You are faithful. Let us rejoice and celebrate. Kapatid, God called you to be His witness from this day, from today and onwards. Be faithful with the power of the Holy Spirit. Live to the fullest. Kapatid, kung ka sigurado, bakit hindi mo kausapin ng Diyos? Aminin mo sa Kanya, Lord, hindi po ako sigurado. Sa totoo lang, takot nga po ako mamatay eh. Lord, but I want to live to the fullest and I want to do it from now on. Kapatid, kung yun ang puso mo, you cannot do it on your own. Just be humble enough. Taas mong kamay mo sa Panginoon sa Kristo. Lord, kayo, ako, ako po yun, Lord. Ako po yun. Lord, I want to live to the... Yes, wag kamay niya, wag kamay niya. It's between you and the Lord. Wag mo intindihin yung katabi mo. It's between you and the Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, ako po yun, Lord. I want to live to the fullest, O God. I want from today onwards, O God, I want to make sure, Lord, that I would live for you. Yes, kapatid, taas mong kamay mo. Wag kamay niya, wag kamay niya. And for those who raise their hands, rise up from where you are. Tayo ka, tayo ka. Be humble enough and say, Lord, I surrender my spirit before you. Yes. Jesus, hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And maybe to some of you, nahihiya ka, natatakot ka, o kaya, you, pinaniwala mo na yung sarili mo that you belong to Jesus. Friends, I do not even look at you. It's between you and the Lord. Be humble and say to Jesus, Jesus, I know for a fact I do not even care for your word. Lord Jesus, I know for a fact that even my character, there's no such strength to always stand for you. I'm easy this way. I'm afraid to be your witness. I could not speak for you. Lord, so I surrender my spirit to you now. Kapatid, live to the full. Be spirit-filled. So tell Jesus, Lord Jesus, forgive me. I live for my own kingdom. Now I surrender my life to you, for I know you alone died on the cross for my sin. And thank you that you rose again from the dead to assure me that, that it is finished, that everything is fully paid. So Lord Jesus, you promised the Holy Spirit to be given to us. So Lord, as you have promised, I surrender my life to you and I receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, O God. And let the Holy Spirit work within me, Lord. Let the Holy Spirit, Father God, Draw me closer to you. Let the Holy Spirit, Father God, de- help me to desire you, to love your word, and to really develop the character of Jesus in me, that they may see you in me. Lord Jesus, let your Holy Spirit take over my spirit, that I would live only for you from this day onwards. Thank you, Jesus. I know I cannot do this on my own, so, Lord, I surrender. I give my all to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father God, I thank you that you do heard the prayers of my brothers and sisters. And Lord, for those who are also, for everyone in this room, I just pray that we would never forget, oh God, that we are living as witnesses of you, Lord Jesus. That we are witnesses that you are alive and we want to, the people know that you are the only hope that they have for eternity. You alone, Father, can save us, O God, from eternal damnation. You alone, Lord Jesus. So I pray, give us the confidence, the power from the Holy Spirit, O God, to proclaim your name, O God, to declare you, Lord Jesus, to the world. Not only with our words, but also with our lives. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, accomplish your will in our lives, O Lord. And I pray, Father God, to really bless everyone in this room. 
And for those who have not decided yet, oh God, I pray to continually speak to them, continually minister to them, and continually allow them to see how empty our lives are without you. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen.